To me, seeing the third graders in this kind of setting is exactly what we talk about when we talk about hands-on learning, project-based learning. And I was amazed that the kids understood the concepts. I mean, I checked in with three or four different kids, and each one that I asked about the sensors and the robot, they were able to explain to me why the robot was hitting the wood and how the motor had to reverse. I mean, I was just blown away by the vocabulary and the concepts the kids were introduced to. When you bump into things, it will push this back, right. which um, puts on a motor, and then it will turn. The motor will make it turn the other way. Uh, I'm here. Our sensors. If they bump into a wall, uh, it will make them go. It will make them go back. From the first day, just. Um, approaching the whole content, um, starting with the, the atom and um, working your way through that. It was amazing to see that the students were interested. Um, and it could have been because they knew they were going to build a robot eventually, but they were interested in the content and knowing that process. Um, and then when we moved beyond the content and started to have that application, um, the students got so excited. Um, and to see the fact that they can use hot food guns and to learn how to solder, it, uh, it, was just, it was just so amazing to see the whole process. The hardest part was technically soldering and hot gluing. When we did, did a test out for a maze, it kind of like the, the table was a little slippery, so the, the robot wasn't doing his own job. He was just sliding across on the table, so we had to add another layer of hot so for me, uh, the thing that I've learned in the project is that you, you don't necessarily know what you don't know. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I think being able to come into the classroom is extremely valuable. It's, it's taking all the assumptions that we've made and saying these are good assumptions or these aren't good assumptions. And so now we have a much better idea of what works and how we could potentially scale it. This was too far in, so it would go really slow. And then if you glue it back and sharper, it goes a lot faster. The resistors stop our LEDs from getting too much of electricity. These are the LED lights right here. Um, these are the switches. Battery, battery holder. holder. Battery holder with batteries in it. Um, these are the paper clips. Um, these are other kinds of switches. These are resistors. Um, these are the motors. We, uh, this is the solder that we uh, started the wires on with. Their, their depth of understanding was surprising to me. Um, and I don't know why it should have been, but and I, somebody said to me today, I don't, this should not be the exception. Why aren't we teaching like this all the time? And I'm like, I gotcha, you know, why are we not teaching like this all the time? Because it's possible and it's amazing what you can do with kids. I think one of the most important values in this kind of project is the hands-on experience. So you take a lot of the things that they're reading in the books about atoms and what energy is and what our energy source is, and they, they learned about sunlight as an energy source, but actually using a solar cell and being able to apply it to transfer that energy and see it for themselves to light up an LED, I think that is an enriching experience in itself. <laughs>